Here we are in the southern portion of the evergreen forest. This area of the forest is dominated by Douglas fir, and there's some laminated root rot I've seen in other portions of the forest in southern Washington. And there's a relatively dense collection of Douglas fir in this portion of the forest. But what you'll notice is that a lot of these Douglas fir are actually relatively small, and their canopies can be really thin. Foresters will look at the live crown ratio, or the ratio of the total tree height in each individual tree that is occupied by green limbs as an indication of how trees might be struggling with density issues. These forests, you can see most of the trees are pretty branchless down low, or at least they just have a lot of dead branches. As you look up in the canopy, some of these trees have live crowns that begin almost 80% up the trunk length. And that's an indication that this is a portion of the forest that's going through what we call self-thinning. What self-thinning means is that the taller trees, the ones that are able to access light and have a little bit better occupation of the canopy, will survive. And those that can't access that light are more likely to die. You can see some individual trees that are not able to make it. Here's an individual here. We're looking up in the canopy of a dead individual tree until we reach a balance between the number of organisms and the size of those same organisms, in this case, trees. One place in which sustainable forestry can interact with this, and foresters have thought about this for a long time, is that by getting into a forest and capturing the mortality of trees before they die, we can make use of trees that otherwise are, are going to die when they're relatively small and decompose relatively quickly. Small trees in a forest in terms of the carbon cycle are likely to decompose very quickly once they hit the ground and not contribute tremendously to the soil or overall carbon storage of an ecosystem. Whereas large trees, whether they're alive or they're dead, are likely to contribute hugely to forest carbon balance. They store carbon in their stems for a long time. So when we look at this, tr this forest, you could walk through and pick out individual stems that are likely to be winners or losers in the long run. And by selecting out those trees that are smaller and more likely to die naturally and leaving behind the larger trees that are likely to do well, you could thin this forest, leaving the remaining trees healthy and removing the smaller trees that are about to go through self-thinning. It's up to the ecological forestry uh, student, and we're all students in this regard, to decide what the best course of action there is.